going to investigate the path of the center of mass of a rigid body under the force of gravity. In front of me I have a balsa wood rod with five different LED lights on it. When I drop this rod, it will move under the force of gravity, and depending on what surface the other end of the rod is on, the path of the center of mass will change. We're going to investigate two surfaces today. One is going to mimic a smooth surface, and we're going to have a piece of paper on the table itself. It's going to have very minimal friction. The other is a piece of rubber gasket material, which will provide much greater friction and thus change the path of the center of mass. first test, on the friction surface, we notice the red light does not move horizontally and the center of mass, the blue light, moves in a curve to its final position. On the nearly smooth surface, we see that the red light moves horizontally and the center of mass moves in a straight line to its final position. Why is this? When we examine our two cases side by side, we see the differences in the paths of the rigid body through the two cases. On the smooth surface, the center of mass moves in a straight line vertically. On the rubber surface, the center of mass moves in a curve to its final position. The explanation for this phenomenon comes when we look at the free body diagram. On the nearly smooth surface, we only have two forces, our weight, mg, and our normal force, n, two uneven forces in the y direction. When we apply Newton's second law, we see that we have no acceleration in the x direction and an acceleration downward in the y direction. When we introduce friction, the free body diagram changes and now, when we sum the forces in both the x and the y direction, we have the resulting acceleration both laterally in the x direction and vertically in the y direction. This translates into the curved path of the center of mass as the body falls to the ground.